So I've got my virtual device running and my real device. My project folder for today is on my flash drive. Um, I'm going to do that trick. Remember, in Windows, you can shift, right click your folder to quickly open your command prompt. So we'll open the command prompt. We'll open, we'll open the command window there. Shift, right click today's project, win, uh, project folder. So we're in the right place. What we're going to do then is we're going to add the ability to uh, do some more interesting pop-ups in our project. In order to do that, we need to learn how does it work. What do we need to, to write with code? So let's open our web browser and we'll go back to the documentation. We'll go back to cordova.apache.org. We'll go back to the website of the framework that we're using. We'll do a little bit of reading. How does the uh, how does the dialog box system work? Because the documentation will give us the general overview of it. It'll give us code examples, and then we can apply it ourselves. So let's go to the web browser cordova.apache.org. Once we're on the website, we need to click up on the link at the top, documentation. click on documentation. We're going to be spending a bunch of our time usually reading upon the section down here on the bottom of the chapters, plugins. We're going to be reading how the plugins work. So on the left side, table of contents column, click on the plugin APIs. An API stands for uh, application programming interface, I believe, which just means this is the code that you need to write to interface with a particular application, programmatically, typing commands. So these plugin APIs means this is the code you need to write. And then Cordova will take care of translating that code into the appropriate language for Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, Blackberry, etc. Um, so we're going to use, if you scroll down, to Dialogs, Dialogs, Visual Device Notifications. If you scroll down, it's alphabetical, let's find Dialogs. Click on Dialogs. Once you click on Dialogs, it should open up. Uh, if you have a keen eye, actually, you'll see that it took us out of the Cordova website and over to npmjs.com. Um, that's related to Node. Uh, this is where all of the... When we typed Cordova plugin add battery, for example, it was connecting to this site to download the appropriate code to implement into your project. Um, so I'm just going to close a little advertisement up here. Cordova-plugin-dialogs. That was one of the items that we added when we copied and pasted our, our code. When I gave you that big line of code to, to copy and paste, it added this particular plugin. This plugin provides access to some native dialog UI, user interface elements, via the global navigator.notification object. Installation, Cordova plugin add, Cordova dash plugin dash dialogs. That's done. Then we've got these methods or specific commands. This is JavaScript. Navigator.notification.alert.confirm.prompt.beep. We can also make a beep. We can make a sound come out from the device. Let's say someone is trying to click save, but they haven't added all of the data yet. Navigator.notification beep can then fire and it'll beep at them to alert them, hey, you didn't fill it up correctly. We'll start with this first one. Navigator.notification.alert. This shows a custom alert or dialog box. Most Cordova implementations use a native dialog box for this feature, but some platforms use the browser's alert function, which is typically less customizable. That's what we did previously. We had, uh, we had an alert, but we had prompt. We had prompt that pops up to ask for the user's name. It wasn't that customizable, and it looked fine on a website, but it didn't look that customized like an Android app. Using navigator. 
notification should look more like an Android type of dialog box or an iPhone type of dialog or a Windows phone without us having to write the appropriate code. So notice the code is navigator.notification.alert. That's a method which then has a variety of parameters. Message, alert, callback, title, button. Usually when we see code examples, anything that's in square brackets usually means it's an option. Uh, so here then, we know that we should write some sort of message and we should add some sort of alert callback but the options are a title and a button name. The documentation further tells us what do those things mean. Message. This is the, this is the text that it will appear in the box, such as, please enter your name. Alert callback. A callback, a function to invoke when, a letter, when an alert dialog is dismissed. So we need to add a function there. And uh, it's not obvious, but we don't add the parentheses of the function. We just add the name of the function. That's often how it is when you've got some sort of method and then a callback function, a function that we call or a function that we use when something happens. In this case, when someone dismisses it, when someone closes the dialog box, we can then further run another function. Our little dialog box can have a title at the top of the screen. It's optional it's going to be a string which is basically text. If we don't write anything, the default will say alert, which might not be what I want. And then we can actually change the name of the button. This is a string, so it's text or numbers. If we don't write anything there, it'll automatically say OK. If we instead want it to say got it, well, we just add that extra option. Further, the example works like this. Let me skip this part first. So the example says navigator.notification.alert, open parentheses, close parentheses. It's just divided up into multiple lines for readability. The first parameter then, here in quotes, you are the winner. Comment, that's the message. Comma, alert dismissed, that's the callback function. When someone clicks the done button, then the alert dismissed function will fire which is up there and it doesn't do anything yet. <laughs> comma, oh, game over. That's the text that will appear on top of the box, comma, and then what's text is on the button. So in order for this to work, we need to write some JavaScript. Let's open our project folder. www folder and we write our JavaScript in this codica.extra.js file. That's just a holdover if you realize by now. This is just a JavaScript file. It could have been called myjavascript.js or it could have been called magic.js. It could have been called whatever you want, but it's still called from the holdover way back when we created the project in um, Codica. So let's edit the codica.js file. Right-click edit with notepad. Okay, let's say um, we've got this on device ready function which fires or is executed when we know the Cordova code is ready, the Cordova APIs are ready. So usually we're going to be writing most of our code inside the on device ready. We've got code that's outside of it. And that was a holdover before we got into having uh, a, a native app. So we'll, we'll leave the, this code where it is at the moment. Um, ideally, we would want all of this code inside of the on-device ready. But I wouldn't simply cu cut it and paste it and move it there because it'll probably break some functionality. So we'll leave that code as is, but make a note that usually we're going to be writing most of our code when we're dealing with anything Cordova related in the on device ready function. So that means after navigator.splash screen, we'll give yourself a couple of lines. This is line 9. Inside on device ready, then I'm going to start my 
uh, my code here, and we can copy and paste just to save ourselves some effort. Uh, in this example, just copy the whole line of code in the gray box, copy the whole thing, and then we'll see how we can edit it and use it. Just copy that whole line, that whole block of code, I mean, in the example, and then we'll paste it on line 9 inside of the onDeviceReady function. I pasted it in and it kind of goes out of alignment. This doesn't matter, but we've been used to writing our code. And if there's a function, we indent it and so forth. What happened here is it took away the indentation. Let me show you this trick that I like in Notepad. I want to indent all of these lines of code. They're all the way to the left. So you would think, okay, I'm going to tab that one, and then I'm going to tab that one, and the next one. I don't know if I mentioned it before. But what I like to do is if you select all the lines of code, and then press tab, they all get an automatic tab. Instead of going in and tabbing seven times, just select everything, tab, and they all go over. That was optional, of course, but now it looks pretty. And we should always write, we should always strive to write good code that works and good code that looks pretty, that is functional. Which then means I should tab that. Okay, so navigator got notification alert, you are the winner, alert dismissed. We'll leave this as is and then we'll customize it how we want in a moment. Um, let's say we let's let's go back to line 10. It says do something. Let's remove that line 10 and instead we'll make it say console.log. We'll put something in the console just to make sure it's all working. And we'll say um, the alert was dismissed. So at this point, navigator.notification.alert would automatically happen as soon as the app loads. Why? You would suddenly get a pop-up. You are the winner as soon as you load the app. Why? <coughs> well, all of this code is inside of on device ready. So as soon as on device ready is ready, as soon as line 3 executes, it will then execute on device ready. It will go from top to bottom, top to bottom, get to here, and make it pop up. You're a winner. Let's say instead uh, I want to control it. I want this to appear uh, with some user feedbacks. Uh, the user is going to click a button, let's say. So instead, this, these lines of navigator notification alert, they should be inside of a, another function so that they can be called as necessary. So I'm going to back up to line 12, and uh, line 13 actually, and start writing function. Let's call it my alert. Open close parentheses, open curly brace. If that's the opening of my curly brace, after all of this, I then want the new curly brace, line 20. And we're going to make a new curly brace after line 20. And this whole navigator notification block indented to show it's inside of my alert. What we've done here now is we've made it so that this alert box does not happen automatically. It will happen after something else triggers it. Something will use the my alert function to make the dialog box appear. So be careful here. This closing curly brace goes back to this one here. The one that's left over goes back to the on device ready. Just follow the line. If you click on that curly brace, it should become red and take you back to on device ready. If it takes you back to my alert, that's a problem. You need to make sure you've got two closed curly braces right there. See that if you're not used to it by now, you should be clicking on your code in Notepad, especially function blocks. 
click at the end of the code, the red line should take you back. That's where it starts. That makes sense. And that one goes back to on device ready. The way that we will make this alert happen is uh, the user, for the moment, is going to click on something on screen. And then this will pop up. So we need a way to, uh, for that, for the user to, for the app to know that the user clicked on something to then run this function. Um, we've got, so far, um, we've got... Okay, we've got an example of that on line 43. Line 43 is what we did last month when we were asking for the user to type in their name. We have the jQuery object right here, dollar sign, dollar sign, pound, symbol, button, customize. There's an ID. There's some object in the app with an ID, button, customize on the event of a click, then run a function, get name. And that asks for the name, and a bunch of other stuff happens. We're going to do something similar for the alert to, uh, to pop up. And as I said, we're going to do most of our code inside of OnDeviceReady. So let's back up. We'll go to the new line 21, and we'll start the same sort of syntax. Dollar sign, open close parentheses, question. You're uh, closing curly brace on 22. Where is that supposed to link up to? Well, it's supposed to link up to on device ready. On um, five. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll check your code in one moment. Dollar sign, open close parentheses, on, open close parentheses. That's our very basic syntax for what we're about to do. Something is going to get clicked and something will happen. The something that we're going to click is in the first parentheses, in quotes. This doesn't exist yet. We don't have a button yet. We're working backwards. We're going to click a button, but it doesn't exist yet. So in quotes, we need to reference the button. And we'll do it the same way as an ID. There will be a button that has a unique ID. So let's make it up right now. Button, btn, my alert. There's going to be some button on the screen with an ID. Uh, button my alert on in quotes click when there's a click which is synonymous with a tap Cordova translates it to the appropriate code when there's a click when there's a tap on a button something will happen so comma after the click function open close parentheses open close curly brace And so within the, it's just the way it is, it kind of looks redundant, but within this anonymous function, <coughs> it's anonymous because notice our other functions, we write function and then we name it. We write function and then we name it. This one's anonymous, it has no name. Within this anonymous function in the curly braces, we'll write my alert function. Check that your code looks like that. So we're saying once we click, on this button, it will run the alert, the my alert function, basically.
Okay, so uh, it's uh, it's a few steps, isn't it? We've got a we've got a, the alert function which is going to display on screen, but we don't have we don't use it until someone clicks on that button. So let's make that button, and that button we will make it back in the HTML code in the in the index HTML file. Uh, so now let's in Notepad let's open our index HTML file. And this is just, at the moment, a proof of concept. We can figure out later what really we, we want to do with this. We just want to see, does it work? So we'll just put this somewhere where it might not really make a lot of sense, but we'll just put it in. Let's put it in in line um, 67. Let's go to line 67. I see a grid. I see the two columns. Grid UI block A and B, so two columns. And then grid A. It's a little, a little uh, column thing. So we will make a button here, very similar to what's on line 64. We will just call this alert, nothing fancy. And we'll have here, and we'll have an A tag because it's going to be a link. It's going to be a button. So very similar to what we have up here. Data roll button and so forth. Let's say href equals pound. We're not going to use the property of href. It's not going to take us anywhere. So we'll just use the dummy link. We want it to behave like a button, so we have to put something in href. Data role button. That's all we need for the moment. We'll skip the icon and other fancy stuff for the moment. I just want a button. So I want people to click on that button to make the pop-up happen, and we're almost there. What we're missing is this button doesn't know that this is the one that needs to be clicked on to run the function, because it's missing the ID. So we'll add one more property here, one more attribute, actually. ID equals the name of the ID we just made up on the JS file without the pound symbol. ID equals button my alert. Spelled exactly the same way, of course. If you forgot how you spelled it previously, go look at it. Don't assume you remembered how you spelled it. I copied it from the JavaScript file and I pasted it here in the HTML file. And remember, no pound sign. I think at this point we're able to see the fruits of our labor, so let's file and save all. We've worked with more than one file, so you should go to File, Menu, Save All, and now however you want to run this. Run it in, you know, do Cordova Run Browser, or Cordova Emulate Android, or Cordova Run Android, whatever you do. When I say run it, you figure out how you're going to run it. That's my shorthand. So go ahead and write your code, save your code, run it. See if it works. Try Cordova Run Browser just to see if that'll be a viable thing to do. Let me just load mine up to see if it works, and then I'll confirm with you that it worked.
And so we will see that it will, it will be a little annoying when we're in this part of our development process. It's not going to be as quick as last month where we save it, run it in Firefox, and we're done. Now because it's a full app, we have to do this Cordova emulate or Cordova run Android to see the result on the device, and it'll take longer, and that's why you want a better, newer, faster computer. So the first time usually takes a while just so that it compiles all of your code. Subsequent time should be slower. So while I'm catching up with you, did you try it and did it work for any of you? Did you get a little pop-up? You did? Cool. Let me confirm mine works and then we'll check your code if it didn't. Okay, here we go. So it's going to bring up the splash screen. Going to cut it because then device ready happens. Then uh, we've got the alert box. Click that. Game over. You are the winner. Done. So all of that code was to make that. Notice that dialog box looks a little bit more like a real Android box. It'll look more like a real iPhone box instead of the plain old alert or prompt. So Let's confirm. Does anyone need a little help? Did it work for everyone? If it has no text, you mean right here? Um, did you close your A tags? A tag start, A tag end. Okay, so um, there's a dialog box. You have different um, you have different ideas of then what you could do with this. Uh, let me go back to my code here. So we've got this dialog box that appears. Game over. You are the winner. Done. Okay, we made it literally appear because we have a button that we click to make that happen. Now that we've got this set as a function called myAlert, we can use that anywhere, anytime. We can make this pop-up box appear in almost any way or any circumstance now. And it doesn't always have to say, you are the winner, or game over, or done. We can change it to make it say different things as necessary. Um, so. Maybe we could do that. Let's try that just to show you here. This function right now is, is, a, is a very specific function. And a lot about computer programming is thinking about how can we create an algorithm? How can we create a technique in programming that will be the most generic? 
instead of the most specific, the most generic that I can reapply over and over. This alert really only applies when someone wins. Well, what if someone loses, or someone draws, or someone concedes? So instead, let's alter our function here to be a little bit more generic. We defined our function, my alert here, and we didn't define any further parameters that we could include. So let's try this. Let's go back to our JavaScript, line 13, and we're going to change our function of my alert so that it accepts some parameters. It's going to, uh, inside the parentheses, we'll write msg, that'll be message, comma, title, comma, and um, btn. What I'm saying here is now there's I've created, I've redefined my function so that whenever I use my alert I have to provide three parameters. I have to provide what's the message it's going to display, what's the title it's going to display, and what's our button going to display. Here it was always displaying the same thing over and over. Now if we ask the program to provide those three parameters, we can reuse this MyAlert function however we want. So what we need to do then is instead of this first line here, you are the winner. We're going to replace that, including the quotes, with MSG. This first parameter of alert assumes you're going to show a message. The message is going to come from here when we use it in the HTML file or elsewhere. So then with game over, we're going to replace game over with title, no quotes, and then done, we will replace with btn. And then if you want to, just to make it look nice, I'm going to tab that stuff over. So now we also need to change our um, we also need to change our line twenty one we need to change our line twenty one to include these uh, these particular parameters these particular extra options of our function. So here under my alert, line 21 is where I would change, um, or where I would add the actual messages. So let's say inside of my alert we will do quotes and let's say this one is our message. Uh, we'll say try again. We'll put it in quotes. That's the message that is then going to be passed into this function. So my alert is going to take the first placeholder message and then put it in here. Comma, after the quote, the second placeholder, which is the title, um, we can make that one still say game over in quotes, comma, and then the button will say dismiss. You see I'm passing into the function these three parameters because I've created in a sense these placeholders in the function and then I've used them, these variables, in the function. So I'm going to try that now. I'm going to save my files and then I'm going to run, I'm going to run this my 
code. So some things to watch out for. You don't put quotes in here or else it would literally display MSG instead of what the person wrote here. We do use quotes here because we're, we're writing a string and then we're passing it through and then this the variable is being used right there. So no quotes there. And you do need quotes over here. And then comma, comma. What's that to dismiss? Is that the end of the line? Yes. We didn't change anything there, so it just ends. Okay, so this time it's only taking about 46 seconds. Previously it took more than two minutes. Here we go, load that loaded up. Alert, click it, game over, try again, dismiss. It should still work as before in that it makes a dialogue, but now it's got new text. Did that work for everyone? Okay. Yes, I'm gonna go back here. All that it is is you're still gonna see the same alert. You click it, and then now it'll say game over, try again, dismiss. Okay, well imagine, you don't have to do this, but imagine we have another line of code exactly like this called uh, btn new game on click function my alert name start game and OK. You don't have to write this because we're not really making a game. But this is my concept now. Do you see where we're using my alert again? We're just feeding it in different text. We're using my alert here and here and here as many times as we want to feed in a different uh, parameter, different option, and then an alert appears. We're, we're using the same Cordova code, but we're just, we're just then using that my alert more generically. We've made a more, perhaps a more efficient algorithm in that we have a function that we can reuse that is not a static function that previously only worked for one purpose. We have another button that can reuse that function. Okay, let's say I want to do something. Oh well, we uh, we sent the console log output. Um, we sent console log output after you click OK. Let's see that because we're going to need to look at the console various times, especially when we work with the database. So um, I've got mine running on my emulator, and this should also work on a device. But I've got my emulator running, and we're going to use the Google Chrome uh, console. Let's open uh, Google Chrome if you don't have it open, and then we will go to the address on top, Chrome, colon, slash, slash, what is it again, inspect? Yes, Chrome, uh, colon, slash, slash, inspect. You should then see either your virtual device, which will say the Android SDK, that's your virtual device, or it'll say your particular device, mine's the xt 1528 or it's going to be something else. You're going to see either of your devices, and you're going to see your project running. Look for something that says www.index, probably home, inspect. So then that will pop up the Chrome, further the dev tools here, and then finally look at these console tab of your new window, very cluttered window, but just look around for the console. So you see here, 
I, I pressed the button. The alert was dismissed, and it happened twice. I'm going to click this little clear console symbol just to close to clear out the console, and then you'll see here. I'm going to click alert. I'm going to click dismiss. The alert was dismissed. I'm going to click alert. Dismiss. The alert was dismissed. So I am getting console output. Does everyone see that? Sorry, what do you like to, what do you click on before, like when you go to the inspect line and you see on your devices and you click on inspect? Inspect. Yes. Okay, um, yes. Yes. And then it comes to the console. Yeah. So something happens there. It's very interesting. Okay. It does say alert was dismissed. Here, go back to your uh, device virtual device. Click alert. Click alert. Click alert. Dismissed. Okay, so we can get up there. So, 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 so,
All right, so we've got a basic alert. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's make it a little bit more fun. Let's say this alert appears, and after we close the alert, it plays a sound. So that'll incorporate the callback function in our, in, our co in our JavaScript code. We've got the alert dismissed, which at the moment is just doing console log output. It's just a proof of concept or to, to debug. The user never sees the console, um, the, the usual user. So what I want is someone clicks OK on this, and then it'll play a sound. OK, let's see. How does sound work? I'm going to go back to Cordova documentation. And we saw that one of the methods, one of the commands that we can run here is to beep, to make a sound. So if you go back to your uh, Cordova documentation and scroll down to the beep section, dot beep, navigator dot notification dot beep, the device plays a beep sound. Not literally, it'll play the sound that's built into your device. Later we can see how we can play a specific sound. But notice the way it works is simply navigator dot notification dot beep times which is a number of times to repeat, which is a number, a whole number. So 1, 5, 10, 99, not 7.6. It can do fractions, only whole numbers. So the example, this will beep twice. Navigator.notification.beep2. It'll beep twice. Supported platforms, it works on all of them, but there's some quirks. On Android, plays the default notification ringtone specified by the user's sound and display um, sound effect. So 
if you're running this on a real device, this is when I would allow you to turn your volume up so that we can hear it. You're going to turn your volume up, and then we will add the code in the JavaScript line uh, after the console, so line 11. We're going to write navigator.notification.beep, parentheses, and any number of beeps that you want. Let's start with two, let's say. Save it and run it. If you're running on our computer, you might not hear anything because all our computers are muted. So if, it, if you're running it on your real device, we'll get the best result. Let me turn my volume up just so that you might hear it. But notice what I'm doing. After the person closes the box, the dialog box, alert dismissed. Uh, is used. And alert dismissed will do some console log output and a beep. So I'm going to do Cordova run Android. It should go on, uh, on line 11. Two beeps. Two beeps. So what we're writing here is, is plain, in a sense, plain JavaScript. It has the syntax of JavaScript, but when we do Cordova run, Cordova emulate, Cordova build, it then translates that JavaScript to the appropriate language. So I've said that over and over, but I just think that's very cool. I'm using JavaScript, and then Cordova is taking that and then repackaging it per platform. This is a big deal. That's why I like teaching this class, because so many of us have some experience in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and how we can leverage that to make apps. Uh, just because you know all those three languages, just because you learn all of this stuff in months one, two, and three, though, you're not going to make the next Instagram unless you put more time and effort, because that takes much more time and effort. But you're going to have all of these great tools at your disposal to further create a cool app. So I've got mine loaded up here. I'm going to go to alert. I get the game over. I tap dismiss. Two beeps. At the moment, I can't choose the sound. That would be some other Cordova code. But you see here, hopefully, the possibilities um, about we've got this tool set, Cordova. How can we use it to create the apps that we want to create? The cool thing about Cordova also is it's got a plug-in system. That's what we're doing here. We've got a plugin that lets us activate the beep, a plugin that lets us activate a pop-up, vibration, the camera. And developers throughout the world are creating their own plugins and giving them out for free. Later on, we will use a plugin that will allow us to tweet from our app, to post to Facebook, to post to Instagram right from our app. Because a cool person created this plugin and gave it out for free, basically. And we can add this functionality to any of our apps. That's a humble website upgraded to our devices. That's the whole concept of this class, and sometimes it seems there's so much to learn and so many pieces of the puzzle and all of that, but hopefully you're seeing some results that keep you going, that keep you coming back to seeing that you can do it. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Um, just to show off, I also want this to vibrate. I want it to beep and to vibrate. Uh, vibration is also something that we can tap into via JavaScript, but it's not part of this particular plugin. It's not part of the dialog plugin. And I know that because by reading here the methods, these are the commands, there's nothing here about a vibration. So I need to go back to the plugin directory in Cordova. I'm going to go back to the plugin APIs in the Cordova site 
and scroll down to vibration. It's its own little section. Vibration. So on your own computer, I would recommend you bookmark this page. If you're going to access this all the time, bookmark this page instead of going back to cordova.apache.org, then documents, then plugins. If you're on your own computer at home, uh, bookmark this so that you can quickly go back and read up on what do I do with vibration code again? Well, here it is. So when you click on that, that takes you over to NPM, and you're not going to remember that address. And that's uh, a huge huge um, directory of code. But anyway, Cordova plugin vibration. This plugin aligns with the W3C vibration specification. The W3C is basically the governing body of the web, the World Wide Web Consortium. It's made up of dozens of companies throughout the world, nonprofit and profit companies uh, throughout the world, basically guiding the direction of the web. So W3 specifications are, are very important because that means standards. So this says that this standard uh, follows the official standard. This plugin provides a way to vibrate the device, and it uses navigator.vibrate. So we're going to see over and over, navigator.something will make our code work. Navigator basically is the, is the website, which is basically the app, and making it do something else. Uh, installation, it's already installed, it's supported. Notice this is a little bit different. Some of these plugins are completely universal. They work exactly the same on all devices. But some of these work slightly different on slightly different devices. This is one of them. Supported platform. If you've got if you use navigator.vibrate or navigator.notification.vibrate, it works on all of the platforms. You've also got navigator.notification.vibrate with pattern and navigator.notification.cancel vibration. But that only works on Android and Windows. So vibrate with pattern. We can make it do buzz, 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 buzz. We can make it do like Morse code. We can make it vibrate in a pattern, but only on Android or Windows. Vibrate is recommended. It's, it's just going to be na uh, navigator.vibrate. So vibrates a device a given amount of time. Navigator.vibrate, uh, some amount of time, in milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds is one second. 2,000 milliseconds is two seconds. 3,500 milliseconds is how many seconds? Three and a half, 3.5. So if I wanted to make a vibration that lasts three quarters of one second, how many milliseconds? 750. Close. Three quarters of a second. So 750. Three quarters. I do, I, I'm tricky, yes. <laughs> so the way it works here, pretty easy. Navigator.vibrate with some amount of time. So back to our code. We will attach this further to our alert dismissed. This will pop up, it will say a message, they'll dismiss it, and it'll beep and vibrate. And before we add this, we've been talking about that basically our code is dealt with in the order that it is written, basically. So once we use alert dismissed, it'll start and do console, and then next it'll do the beep and then if we were to add vibration afterward, it would have to wait for the whole beep to then vibrate. So if you've got a long beep, it's going to start to beep, and then it'll vibrate. So conversely, if we added vibration before the beep, it would vibrate for some amount of time, and then it would beep. I don't believe we can very easily make them happen at the same time, simply because they go in order. We are able to do it, but like I said, I don't think we're able to do it simply. Sometimes these basic things take more complex code than you would think. So just keep that in mind for the moment. It'll do one, then the other. Uh, so I'm going to try it like this. I'm going to add some vibration and then the beep. So on line 11, we'll add navigator.vibrate. 
3,000 milliseconds. It's going to vibrate three whole seconds. I think that's too long, but we will just see it very obviously. We will feel it very obviously. So the code is right there, line 11. Unfortunately, if you do this on a virtual device, your computer will not shake. We don't have any way to shake yet. So this is one of the ones you definitely want to do on a real device. And so this is the thing about working with emulators. They'll get you there very close, but some things it just won't be able to do.